Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 24 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm just logging in, checking on my steel production. We've got a lot of steel cooking up, and uh, you can see here we've got, like, you know, all these steel ingots uh, cooking up from the uh, iron there. We use about one iron and uh, one of those coal cokes per process, and you get a good amount of steel one for one, so not too bad. Now we're going to start using the steel uh, in conjunction with the steam power that we set up last episode. Uh, the steel steel will be used for uh, some industrial uh, steam engines. These guys are awesome. They produce a ton of EU. Uh, probably, I think, to my knowledge, one of the uh, highest uh, steam engines capable. So we've got the industrial steam engine here. You also see the commercial and the hobbyists. Not bad. So uh, we're going to go with that. You can see that the highest tier, of course, does require some steel gears and some steel plates. And the steel plates come from four steel ingots. So basically for every industrial steam engine, uh, we're going to need uh, four steel uh, ingots for the plates and we're going to need eight steel ingots for the gears. So a total of 12. Not bad. Uh, now these guys run on steam power. Um, you're going to basically have, um, I think what you need here is mm, for the highest tier one, let's see. So this steam boiler here, the low pressure steam boiler that I've got set up, produces 10 steam per tick, okay? And what that equates to uh, for the 36 I've got is 360 steam total per tick because there's 36 blocks here, right? Cool, sounds good. And then uh, for the uh, engine, the steam engine here, the, the, um, the hobbyist steam engine uh, requires 10 steam per tick for making two Minecraft jewels. Uh, this guy requires 20 steam per tick. Uh, that's the commercial steam engine, and that will make a total of, uh, I want to say four steam Minecraft tools. I'm not sure, maybe, uh, maybe five. And then uh, the highest tier one, the industrial steam engine, uh, that can run... Um, with uh, eight Minecraft jewels, and that requires 40 steam per tick. So according to my calculations, if this guy is producing 360 steam per tick, and this requires 40 steam per tick, isn't that we can make nine of these guys and run it at full power, and any more would be uh, a little bit less powered, right? So, uh, you know, nine times four is 36, so nine times 40 is 360. Cool. So I think we want to make nine industrial steam engines. And you can see it's using its blaze rods a little bit slower than it was before because we're still gaining heat here. Once this thing reaches maximum heat, um, it's going to be even more efficient and use the blaze rods even slower. So I'm thinking I've got a layout here. Right now I've got eight set up. Um, you know, we'll see. We can do nine, I think, but we're going to lay these out. Now the only thing about this is uh, the output. Uh, you can only dump about 80 steam per tick into uh, your output blocks here. So this guy right now is capable of powering two of these engines. But the good thing about um, these liquid ducts from um, the um, thermal expansion mod is that they uh, compress steam because steam after all is uh, compressible, it's a gas, so uh, you do need to have multiple of them hooked up, but they will also uh, you know, compress down. So that should be capable of running four. So we're going to test this out and make sure that we're right about that. Pretty sure we are. Uh, so for now, I'm going to uh, get myself some steam stuff ready to go. So remember, for each of these engines, I'm going to make eight of them, I think. Well, let's start with four and see how we go from there. So uh, in order to make four, I need to go over here to my rolling machine. Cool. And that's going to start rolling up. And while that's happening, uh, let's go ahead and get our uh, auto crafting table ready to go and put together some of this good stuff. Yeah, spruce will be fine. That'll get me eight gears, which again will be four. Cool. Ah, we're all right there. Cool. And then, uh, of course, the steel ingots gets us those guys. Now we're going to need a few pistons here. Remember I said I'm starting out with four. We might upgrade to eight a little bit later once I get a few more of the steel cooked up. I'm going to need some wood for this. Well, I have a good source of that right outside. Cool. By the way, it looks like my wood has filled up here. Um, so we're going to need a better storage of wood because I bet we have a bunch of wood building up in a backlog there. Yes, we do. So, yeah, we'll deal with that later. 
Let's go throw about a stack or so into this table. Four. Perfect. Got any glass on me? Always short on glass. I really need to get a better supply of sand, I think. Sand is kind of uh, in uh, high demand right now. So cooking up the last of that stuff, and here goes nothing. Industrial steam engines. These guys are so cool. So let's go ahead and hook them up and we'll see if I'm right about this whole, you know, full power thing. Now I've also got some uh, redstone energy conduits and I should have a cell on me somewhere uh, to store this energy. That's full at the moment. That's all right. We'll be able to see on the uh, GUI, the GUI of the industrial steam engine here, whether or not everything's running smooth. So here goes nothing. I'm uh, going to want to lay out something like this, I think. Nope, not there. Cool, we've got two. And uh, once they receive a redstone signal, they should be good to run. So let's see, I'm gonna need uh, some kind of uh, redstone signal to apply to them. I don't think I can put the levers straight on them like most engines, so we're gonna have to figure out a good way to run a redstone engine to these guys. Hmm. Uh, I'll be right back when I figure out what I want to do. All right, guys, I redesigned my room a little bit because I wasn't terribly thrilled with the way it was laid out just yet. So uh, placing down some liquid ducts here to get the steam flowing properly. Uh, we should be able to run it like this. And here's the layout I came up with. Uh, no, you are not cobblestone. Okay, so uh, if we put liquid ducts here, for example... And I'm thinking, probably want them also to go here. And then we want the steam engines on top. So I'm thinking of something like this and this. Not loving the fact that that connects. It's not hurting anything that it connects, but just for appearance's sake. Mm, maybe I'll do this. Oh, now you're going to connect, aren't you? Mm. Again, not hurting anything if it connects, but just want it to look nice. All right, this'll do. Yeah, that looks pretty fancy. Perfect. Okay, so uh, what we're going to have here is the steam running into these guys, and then uh, the power conduits coming along the top here. This'll look good. This will look really good, I think, actually. I might not even want these guys connected here. I'm thinking what I'll do is just have the conduits running like this. Straight out to here. And then maybe connect here to here. And then we can have all the steam engines under here. That looks nice. Not bad at all. As for uh, the redstone signal, well, I've got some in here somewhere. Where did they go? There we go, I found them. I had them in my canvas bag by mistake. All right, got some uh, stone brick jacketed wiring. Now this stuff should uh, connect up to all my uh, engines here. And when I give this guy a redstone signal, he should turn on. So I think what I'll do is then, hmm, what do I want the on off lever for this? We basically want this on all the time, really. Like these engines running all the time. Well, for now, I think I want them on all the time. Later, I might want this to actually be an on-off lever, but we'll see. Uh, for now, I'm just going to place this like so. I'm going to make this a little bit fancier later, but I think this will give us a good start. Because I have a plan for this room that will eventually make it, you know, a little nicer. So now these guys should be getting a redstone signal. So all i got to do is connect up my steam and see how we make out. So here goes nothing. Go, steam, go. Uh, they should start filling up with steam internally and producing Minecraft jewels. Nice. Look at that. Uh, we're already up above the five mark. That's really quick. Cool. Not bad at all. 
Now remember, like I said, it requires about 40 Minecraft jewels per steam engine to run, or 40 steam per tick to get these guys to run at a max speed of 8. Okay, and this guy, as far as I understand, can only output 80 total. So one connection to your uh, steam boiler with Liquidux is enough to run two steam engines. But if I put like a third and fourth here, let's see what happens. Okay, one, two. All right, so these guys should start taking on some steam. Um, but let's oh, see how it's already started to negatively impact your industrial steam engines over here. So they aren't able to keep up. So each of these probably will balance out and run at four each. Because that's about half power, right? Makes sense. So these guys have balanced out around four. These guys are going to balance out around four. But if I run another connection here and connect to this guy up, the steam is compressible, so it should all go into the pipe. And now we're going to spike back up to eight each. Okay. But if I put another set of these, I'm going to need another connector. But overall, I think this is a pretty fancy design. Where's my awesome wand? There he is. What's up, wand? Make this room look nice. Somebody's got to do it. I need more of those bricks. But yeah, so I think we've got a pretty solid engine system going on here. Now, I should have a little bit more uh, iron or steel cooked up. So I'm going to make another set of four engines off camera, and then I'll be back when I'm ready. And there we go. Four more engines. Perfect. Uh, now, like I said, this should be able to run a total of eight right? So, or nine. Yeah, nine. But I've got eight here just because, uh, you know, that's symmetrical. So I will have a little bit more steam already than uh, I need to manage this. Oh yeah, that's so cool. I love the wand of equal trade. So awesome. Beautiful. So let's get these things hooked up. And you can already see that they're running at a nice speed. Now, by hooking these up, of course, I need to get some more conduits going, but we'll take care of that in a moment. Nope, not there. And like I said, I will probably have some kind of control system for this that's going to be a bit automatic, more so than, uh, you know, we've already seen, because I'm going to want to use the steam for more than just build craft power. I'm going to flip these guys over to the orange node. I don't think it matters. Uh, I think engines always output into the um, conduits, but, you know, good idea to flip them to orange. So, yeah, see, look, we're back down to four because we're outputting, what I say, uh, 80 each. So that's uh, 160, but total we need to put 320 into the system in order to get these guys to all run nice and smooth. So everybody's producing four at the moment, okay? If I put up another liquiduct like so, that should bring everybody up to six. Cool. So everybody can barely run at six right now. And then one more to get everybody up to eight. There we go, now we're climbing beyond six. Perfect, so now we've got a really nice system for, uh, you know, cooking up some good things. Lots of uh, MJ production, which is gonna be perfect because uh, we're gonna wanna set up something a little bit of an automated way of transporting power from one area to the other, and I think I have a good idea on how I wanna accomplish this. All right, guys, so I've got something to make. Uh, I'm putting together a turtle, and I want to get a gate reader turtle. So for that, I'm going to need a gate and some wiring, and then I'm going to need some of that stuff. And that gets me a gate reader. And if I combine that with my turtle, I get a gate reader turtle. Awesome. And then I'm going to get myself one of these guys, another crescent hammer. I already have one, but I'm making another one to put on this turtle, which makes it a gate reader engineering turtle. Now the engineering turtle is able to pick up and uh, you know interact with different uh, thermal expansion items and other cool stuff like that. It basically is a turtle that can use the crescent hammer. And the gate reader turtle is a turtle that can interact with inventories just like the buildcraft gates, which means it can read adjacent inventories, find out how much stuff is in there. Um, it can read all kinds of stuff that any of the gates can read. So it can find out if there's liquid available. Basically it's a turtle with a built-in gate and uh, it can get a bunch of information. So I want to come up with a cool way to transport power from this 
power station right here that's producing a bunch of steam. By the way, you can see the blaze rods are lasting a little bit longer now that the steam is heated up, and we still have some more to go before it reaches max efficiency. I'm going to need a little bit more in terms of blaze rods, but we'll get that going at some point too. Uh, what I want to do is set it up so that this engineering turtle here can hang on to one of uh, these guys. A redstone energy cell. And I want to have him be able to interact with the redstone energy cell, place it down here to get it recharged. Once it's fully charged, I want it to bring it all the way over to the quarry and let it power the quarry because, uh, you know, running biofuel back and forth is cool. Now, I could uh, be transporting biofuel if I wanted to, but, uh, you know, the redstone energy cell just seemed like a fun idea. And uh, we might expand this in the future to do uh, some more interesting stuff with other redstone energy cells elsewhere. But for now, I want to give this a shot. So uh, we're going to try and build this. So let's get a couple other things that are going to help us because uh, turtles can travel, but they're a little bit slow. So I've got an interesting idea idea on how I'd like to get that turtle to be a little bit more efficient in terms of how it gets back and forth. Now in order to make what I want to make, I'm going to need quite a few ender pearls. Luckily I have a way to make some with uh, equivalent exchange. We can get uh, an ender pearl for every four uh, pieces of iron. So I had to go burn like a whole stack of iron to make this, but uh, in the end it's going to be really a pretty nice build. So uh, definitely worthwhile. I'm going to need some obsidian and I'm also going to need, let's see, how am I over here for some blaze dust? Not a problem. Cool. So let's get a few of these guys. I have enders. Cool. And I'm going to go ahead and combine them with obsidian and ender pearls all along the sides. And that's going to get me the turtle teleporter. This guy is part of misc peripherals and uh, you can use him to teleport your purtle, turtles from one point in the world to another. And now it's going to use twice as much fuel as it would have used um, in order for your turtle to move from one point to another just under its own normal locomotion. But of course it's a teleporter so it's a little bit more instant and you don't have to worry about obstacles and stuff getting in your way. So I'm going to try this out. Uh, it's the first time I've really used these in like a, you know, real, you know, non-cheating world. So uh, we're going to have to figure out how this works. So what I want to do first uh, is make a uh, redstone repeater, a vanilla redstone repeater, uh, of course. So I'm going to need a little bit of redstone, okay? So the way these work is you can link these two turtle teleporters together, and then the turtle can teleport between them. Nice. Ready to give it a shot. Uh, let's get these things set up. So I'm going to get about three of the redstone that I'm going to need. And we're going to make this stuff. And the redstone repeater is what you use to link them together. Got it? Cool. So uh, all I really need to do is uh, the following. First I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to link this redstone repeater. I right clicked and it says link started. Then I need to bring my uh, turtle teleporter over to where I want the turtle to teleport to. So let's head over to our quarry. Sounds like a pretty cool idea, right? Shouldn't be too bad. Off we go. Now, I really need to, uh, I haven't tested this yet, so I'm really not at all clear on how much uh, fuel this is going to use to teleport this turtle from one spot to another. It might be quite a bit expensive, so we're going to have to figure out if we really want to keep it this way or not, but yeah, we'll figure it out. So let's see, I'm probably going to just extend here, and uh, I want to connect it up like this. So let's get, I should have a few redstone energy conduits here, okay, there. And this is where I'm going to want him to show up. So if I have the uh, turtle sit here, he can deploy it, and then he can teleport back. So I'm thinking turtle teleporter right here. Okay, and what will happen is the turtle will show up here. He'll deploy the uh, you know redstone energy cell here. He'll wait for the redstone energy cell to be empty, and then he'll teleport back. Okay? So that sounds like a pretty good plan. So let's link these guys. Boom. Link to the teleporter. Now that's a one-way link. So that guy can teleport to here, but this one doesn't have a destination. So I have to link back by right-clicking on him and running all the way back to the charging room. And here we go. Boom. Link to the teleporter. Awesome. So now it's just a matter of testing out how to do this. All right, so I'm ready to give this a shot. I'm going to go grab a few more blaze rods. The good news is that blaze rods can be used as a fuel source for uh, turtles. Turtles can use uh, any fuel source uh, in the game. Oh, good. We have a lot. That'll do. 
So uh, we can use these guys to kind of fuel our turtles and get them moving. So let's run over here and see what we can come up with. Um, I'm probably going to wind up having the turtle check its own fuel level, and if it's getting low, I'll just have him walk over here, get some more blaze rods or something, and then uh, carry on back over here. I uh, might have to do something with the peat. I don't know. We'll see. I'll figure it out. Uh, but for now, let's see what happens. So first test, let's go ahead and place down our turtle. Okay, uh, I'm going to want to give him at least one stack of blaze rods to get started with his fuel sourcing. And I'm going to run the refuel command to make sure he has plenty of fuel. Okay, so his current fuel level is 7680. Okay, and we can see we got 120 per blaze rod. So this is me figuring out how much fuel we need to teleport between our two locations. So now he's sitting on top of the turtle teleporter to get this guy to work is pretty easy. All we gotta do is uh, do a peripheral wrap. And then send the teleport function to that turtle. Boom. Oh wait, with the parentheses of course. Ta-da! The turtle has teleported. Let's go over to our quarry and see what happened. And coming up on our quarry, we see the turtle has appeared right here. Now the real trick is to find out um, turtle.getFuelLevel. How much did that use? Uh, ooh, that's not bad at all. We've still got 7,300 fuel left. So uh, what do we use here? We used 380 fuel. So that's about, uh, what, three blaze rods worth? A little bit more. Three blaze rods would be 360. We use 380. So each teleport back and forth will cost us about three blaze rods. That's really not bad. All right, let's uh, do the m is equal to peripheral.wrap on the bottom and m.teleport again. All right, guys, so to demonstrate this, I've uh, written a real quick test program. And uh, all it does is it uh, wraps the peripheral on the bottom and then tries to teleport, waits five seconds, and then teleports back. So what we should see here when I run test is the turtle disappear. And then five seconds later, the turtle is going to reappear. Okay, so he's teleported over and then he teleports back. Cool. So now let's write this program a little bit fancier. All right, so to demonstrate how I want to read the gate uh, using the gate reader, all I have done is place the redstone energy cell in front of the turtle. Okay, and I've written this quick program that's going to uh, read the data out of the redstone energy cell using the gate reader, and then it's going to uh, print out all the information it discovered. So let's run the test gate command here, and we'll see that um, is the full energy that is true. No energy is false. Can store energy is false, and energy stored is true. So this works just like a gate, and it detected that the redstone energy is full. Perfect. That's exactly what we want to be able to figure out. So uh, now I'm going to go ahead and write a real quick program to have this work all the way across. All right, guys, I've got a very basic, well, not so basic, but a very meh, medium basic uh, program that uh, I'm going to go over for you. I just wrote this. I haven't tested it yet, so it might not work yet, but uh, it, the basic just is here. Uh, the teleport function will wrap the peripheral on the bottom, boom, and issue the teleport command. Easy. Uh, the check full function will um, wrap the gate reader peripheral and look at the block in front, the redstone energy cell, and uh, it's going to keep looping uh, while the function is not full. So it's going to check if it's full energy. If that's not true, then it's going to wait two seconds and check again. And it's going to keep checking until it is full energy. And then it's going to pick up the cube. Check empty is the same way, except it checks for no energy. Um, so, you know, it waits for it to be empty, and then it picks up the cube. Cool. Check location is going to find out whether or not it's at the quarry or the charging station. And the way I'm doing that is by doing a turtle.detect up. Basically, the block where the turtle lands, I'm going to have a uh, piece of cobblestone above it. And then, uh, you know, if it detects a piece of a block above it, it's going to know it's at the uh, quarry. And I won't have anything like that along this line, so it won't ever, um, you know, detect up when it's here. So that's just kind of like a neat little way to figure out which location he's at. Um, We've also got the get fuel command. It's going to assume the turtle is sitting here, and then it's going to turn right, move forward nine, turn left, move forward six, grab some fuel, a stack out of this chest, refuel itself, then turn around, move back, move back, and then wait here. Real simple. Okay, um, and I'll upload this code for you guys. Then we've got the check fuel level. All that does is it checks if the fuel is below a thousand, and if it is, it'll print out I need fuel, and then it'll run that get fuel program, which will go and do it. Okay. 
then we've got um, this is the main program. Okay, what it's going to do is first check its current location. If it's currently at the quarry, then what it's going to do is it's going to um, turn right because remember the turtle's facing to the a little bit off to the left when it lands. It's going to place the uh, cube and then it's going to wait for the cube to be empty. And once the cube is empty, remember it automatically picks up the cube when it's empty, so then it'll teleport back here. If it's here already, if it's not at the quarry, then what it's going to do is it's going to turn right, because it'll probably be facing that way, so it'll turn this way, move forward to, and place the cube right there to get recharged. Okay. Then what it's going to do is it's going to check its fuel level. And remember, the check fuel program will check if it's below 1,000. If it is, it'll refuel itself. If it's not, it'll just, you know, skip along. It'll wait for the cube to be full, and then it'll turn left, turn left, move forward back onto the teleporter, and teleport itself. Pretty cool. All right, so let's give this guy a shot. Um, so all I need to do then is uh, to test this is the following. Okay, so let's put the cube in this slot here. Okay, and I think I want my print uh, or my check fuel level to print the current amount. So uh, get fuel does that. Check fuel is okay. That ought to work. Okay. So, he's sitting here. Uh, we want him to turn left because that's probably the way he's going to be facing when he lands. So what he should do is turn right, go here, place the cube, check if he's low on fuel. If he is, he'll come over here and get it. Better get this stuff out of the way. I don't know what his current fuel level is. I've been testing him a little bit. Grab a stack of items from that chest, come back. He probably doesn't need fuel right now. Then he'll check the... Uh, fuel uh, or the, the level of the redstone energy cell, then he's going to teleport over and he's going to wait for it to discharge. So here goes nothing. This might not even run. Like I said, not tested it yet. Oh, see, missed something. Missed a then on line 66. So this is how you debug your code. Um, jump down to line 66. I missed a then somewhere, probably around somewhere here. If location equals quarry. Oh, you have to do double equals if you're checking for truth. I am at the charging station. So he picks up the thing and he teleports over. Cool. Now, uh, he's probably going to think he's at the charging station over there because I forgot to place the block above his head. So he's probably a little confused right now. Let's go check on him. I forgot a step. I'll be back once I get there. All right, it's not in a loop, so it's only going to run once. I did that on purpose. So now I'm going to place a block above his head. Um, and now we're going to run the power program again. So basically what I'm going to do here is um, right now, every time I run power, it's only going to do this whole thing once. Uh, so I ran power, it checked the location, determined it was at the quarry, and then teleported over. But then it stopped. Like I'm not running this in a loop right now. But I will eventually have it in a loop, so it'll keep going. So now I'm going to run power again. And what it should do is it should um, go ahead and, and drop the energy cell and wait for it to discharge. Cool. So let's see what happens. And remember, the block above his head is making him think, oh, right, I know where I'm at. I'm at the quarry. Um, run power. I'm at the quarry. Perfect. And he dropped this guy off, and I need to wrench this thing. This should remember its status between uh, wrenchings. So let's see. Perfect. I'm going to bump this guy up to 70, and this should increase significantly the speed of our quarry. Awesome. Look at that. Now it's getting to be nighttime here, so I'm going to go sleep through the night and come back in a few minutes. Now if we look at the turtle, we should see he's just sitting here waiting. He's waiting and constantly checking if the redstone energy cell is, um, you know, charged or not. So I will go ahead and be back in just a moment. Well guys, believe it or not, while I was waiting to test this, my scrap chest filled up. Ha! <laughs> Perfect timing, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and upgrade this chest real quick. Not too bad, actually. Just going to need a couple of diamonds. And then I can give myself a uh, diamond chest upgrade. Nice. Ta-da! Gold the diamond. And this will give this chest a little bit more space to store some junk. Cool. I better make a uh, UU Matter machine pretty soon to make sure that this thing all runs smoothly. So let's see, is that going to uh, clear the jam? Yeah, it did. So everything's running smoothly again. Uh, we can see our uh, ender chest is emptying, and uh, we're going to head back and wait for that turtle to uh, get an empty cell. And because I have um, another source of power showing up here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually switch this out. Uh, I'm going to reverse this thing and just say, um, let's see, space and inventory is currently emitting a redstone signal. Let's change it to inventory full emits a redstone signal because I'm not really going to need these biogas engines anymore. 
And then what I'm going to do is set it up so that the uh, redstone signal applies to the uh, energy cell. Because right now the energy cell is set in um, control status low, okay, so it's draining power. But if uh, the redstone signal emits, it should stop generating power. See, it stopped. And that'll stop the quarry. But for now, we're going to let it run because this inventory is not full. Perfect. Um, I might need to increase the speed at which the um, sorting machine pulls out of this chest because I don't know if it's going to be able to keep up with the massive amount of items that are come out of here uh, thanks to a full speed uh, energy cell, full speed quarry. But all right, let's give this a few more minutes and the turtle is still, um, oh, I need to uh, run the power command here, realize he's at the quarry and uh, I actually changed it a little bit but I'm going to paste spin this code for you guys, so if you're really interested in the computer craft code for this, you can check it out and hopefully uh, learn a couple things about how I managed to make this program work. Alright guys, the energy in the energy cell is getting very low, so I wanted to be here and film it when, uh, you know, it drops down to zero. So about, you know, five or ten seconds now, we should be pretty darn close to this thing being empty. And within two seconds of it emptying, the turtle should pick it up and bring it back to uh, the home. But remember, I'm still not looping the program, so it's going to wait back there for me to run the power command, because I also want to test real quick to see how uh, my fuel uh, thing works. So let's see. Here we go. And should be emptying any second now. And then remember, within two seconds, Turtle picks it up and teleports. Let's see what happens. Go, Turtle, go. Nice. He picked it up and teleported so fast we didn't even see. That is cool. All right, let's head back. So here we are back at the charging station, and uh, we can see that uh, he is not running. Now, uh, I do want to check his fuel level. Uh, so let's do this just right here. Because I just want to test the refuel command. All right, uh, 2382. So let's just say if you're less than 2500 uh, to refuel yourself instead of less than 1000. Just for now, because I want this to turn out to be true, and then I want him to uh, refuel himself and see that I wrote all the code correctly. Because uh, you know, I might not have. I might have missed a forward or something there. So let's see, 2500. All right, my fuel level. Blah blah blah. I need fuel. Get fuel. Okay, and then uh, I actually want to, uh, after he runs the get fuel command, my fuel that ought to do. Hopefully, all right. Uh, so. He's got his energy cell. Let's run the power function. I'm at the charging station. He goes over and sends that guy to get it. And then he determines that he needs fuel, right? Cool. And he's going over there and he's going to suck an item out of the chest. Cool. I am at fuel level 2300. I need fuel. He grabbed a stack out of the top slot. He grabbed Pete, which is fine. And now he's going to sit over here and he's going to wait. Look, he checked his fuel level again. It's enough. Awesome. And now he's just going to sit here and wait for this thing to recharge. Dude, that is cool. By the way, our steam boiler has reached 500 degrees C, which means it's at its absolute most efficient, and you can see how much longer a single blaze rod is lasting in the boiler. It's not burning through them quite as fast as it was earlier. So that is a huge improvement. Um, so, you know, blaze rod's doing well still. Not bad. We have a lot of them in there, too. So we should be uh, doing pretty good. Uh, the redstone energy cell is quickly charging. I'll be back when it's almost done, and then we got to wrap up. All right, almost full. When it fills up, he should pick this block up and go sit on top of the turtle teleporter. And then we're going to go check out uh, making him run in an infinite loop. There we go. He picked him up, and he's going to go over, and he's going to teleport. Nice. And once he's teleported, uh, he'll just sit over there and wait, because again, not in infinite loop mode. Let's go sleep through the night. And uh, maybe I will uh, have to wrap up pretty soon here. We're definitely past the wrapping up point, as usual. Do I ever wrap up on time? I don't think I do. Anyway, let's uh, check it out. I'm pretty excited to see this guy in action because uh, I kind of wrote this program like for the first time and it worked. Like everything kind of worked. So that's cool. So uh, he should be over there. Now what I'm going to do is put him in a loop. So he should uh, infinitely loop. And like I said, I'll paste bin the program so you guys can mess with it. Uh, potential pitfalls with this program. If he's in the middle of the refuel cycle where he's moving, he's really not going to be able to figure out where he is if he gets, um, you know, relocated. Like if you quit the world and go back in, he's going to restart and he's going to have trouble detecting where he is. But as long as he's in one of his normal sitting positions, he should be fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do is run a startup program and say while true do 
shell.run power. And then it's just going to keep running power every time it starts up. So, go. I am at the quarry, and he placed it, and the quarry is going to run again. Awesome. And uh, then what he should do is uh, teleport back to the main base, and he'll run the power program again, or he's going to wait for it to recharge. And with that, we have an automated powering system between our power plant and our quarry. And we can expand this for other purposes. Um, right now, the current version of MISC peripherals, which is in the Direwolf 20 Mod Pack version 5, doesn't yet have the ability uh, to have uh, the Tech 2 Turtle Teleporters. However, uh, that is coming. There's a new version of tele uh, Turtle Teleporters in MISC peripherals. Uh, what it's going to be able to do is uh, teleport to multiple destinations. So down the line, we might set it up so that uh, our turtles can, uh, you know, run through and power not only our quarry, but maybe even this room and a couple other things. So the turtle teleporter function works pretty well. I'm uh, rather excited about it. Now, also on my to-do list with the steam boiler is start generating industrial craft power. Uh, but for that, we're going to need almost a ridiculous amount of um, coal coke and iron. I think we need, like, just, like, tons of iron. So I'm uh, going to go uh, pull some coal coke out of my coke oven here. You can see it's uh, running and doing its thing. Uh, it's, uh, it's a slow process making this stuff, but, you know, got to do what we got to do. I'm going to go check on my iron production and see how much stuff I got. I think I've got a little bit more coal coke in my mods and dusts. Yeah, I do. Awesome. So, going to get some iron and cook up some more steel. And uh, next up, I think we have to make a mass fabricator because we're overloaded on scrap. Scrap is used for mass fabricators. It's uh, pretty cool. We're going to definitely want to start, you know, processing that stuff using a mass fab. So this is Direwolf 20 wrapping up episode 24. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, season 5 is coming along rather nicely, I think. We've got a lot of power generation, and I think it's time to start working on some more advanced stuff. All right, guys, take it easy.